Okay. Hello class, in this video, we're going to be working on 3.1 and 3.2. There are two sections that have been grouped together in this um, assignment for graphing linear equations and in two variables. And there are about 14 problems in this particular section. So for number one, it says state the coordinates of the points graphed in the figure below. And so you have this graph with all of these points marked. And so we're going through each one and we're finding the coordinates. Now, with the coordinates, they are an ordered pair, which means that the first value and the second value mean something specific. So the first value is the X value and the second value is the Y value, always. Your X uh, number line is here and your Y number line is here. So when I'm looking at this coordinate there, I need to tell them the X position and the Y position. So in this case, it would be negative six and two for A. Now for B, the X position is six and the Y position is negative three. For C, the X position is five and the Y position is positive three. For D, the X position is negative three, but there is no, it's not going up or down, it's on the X axis itself. So the Y value there is zero. For E, there, it's not going to the left or right of this center point. So the X value here is zero and the Y value there is five. And then for F, the X position is negative five and the Y position is negative four. So now they want us to do the reverse for number two, which is they give us the coordinates of all the points and then we have to plot them. So this is the X position, which means I would go to negative three and then that's the Y position, which is positive two. So I would go up two units and that's the coordinate A. B, I would go to the X position of negative four and then go up one and a half. So one and a half units would be marked B. Now for C, it's one for the X value, positive one, and then up positive four. For D, it's over to the X position, positive three, and no up or down movement, it's on the X axis itself. So it's marked there D. E, the X value is zero, but the Y value is negative two. And then F, the X value is negative three and the Y value is a negative, so you will go down four. And now we have plot each of those points. So for number, Three, here we go. This one says plot the intercepts to graph the equation. Um, and so I forgot to write the equation here, but it was 8x minus 3y equal to 24. So they want me to graph this equation and then they want me to find the intercepts to do so. So in order to do that, you would have to find the x intercept. And to find the x intercept, you have to set the y value equal to zero and solve for x. And for the y-intercept, you do the reverse. You set x equal to zero and you solve for y. So in this equation, I replaced the y with the zero and then I multiplied these numbers out. I combined these together, I just got eight x. Eight x, take away nothing, is still eight x. And then I solved this equation by um, getting rid of that eight factor or that eight multiple. So I divided both sides by eight and I ended up with X alone equal to negative three. So the X intercept is negative three for X and the zero for Y that I started with, okay? For the Y intercept, we made the X value zero, multiplied that together, zero minus three Y is negative three Y. And then I solved this equation negative three Y equal to negative 24 by dividing both sides by negative three so that we can get the y isolated, and now I get y equal to positive eight. So the x value that I started with was zero, and the y that I found was eight. So I plot both of those points, so negative three for x and zero for y, and then for the y-intercept, zero for x, but eight for y. And then we draw the line right through those, and you have graphed it. In my math labs, you're going to select the image in the graph that looks like a line, with two dots. And then you're gonna take one of those dots and plot it here, take another, the other dot and plot it there. And once you do that, it'll draw the line and then you can just submit the graph. And 
Okay, for number four, it wants us to do the same thing. It wants us to graph it, but they gave us a table like this, and then they had this here, like a like an ordered pair, like a coordinate. So I have the x's and I want the ordered pair. Well, since I have the x's, I know what all the x coordinates are going to be. They're going to be the same as these x values. But in order for me to figure out the y values, I'm essentially using the equation as my formula. So I plugged in negative 2 for x, and I computed this to negative 1. So that's the y coordinate that goes with the x value negative 2. I then plugged in negative 1, computed this, and I got 0. So 0 is the y value for x equal to negative 1. I plugged in 0 for x, computed this value, I got 1. Plugged in 1, compute, I got 2. Plugged in 2, compute, I got 3. So then all of these points were created using the x values that we started with and the y values that we found. And so we plotted each of these points. So negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1, and 2, and then 2, and 3. And we drew the line straight through them. Now, when you're graphing them on the a computer, you only need to mark two of these points. Now, which two you want to use is completely up to you. You could use any of those two points you want. I used the intercepts as my two points. Now, number five is very much the same thing. They give us the same chart. So those are the same X values. And I plug each one of these X values into this equation to figure out the corresponding Y values. So I multiplied these numbers together, then minus the one. Multiply those together, then minus the one. And I ended up with all of these Y values. So I placed them into the coordinates. And then I plotted each one. So negative 2 and 3, negative 1 and 1, 0 and negative 1, 1 and negative 3, and 2 and negative 5. And then I chose any two points. Um, I don't remember which two I chose, but I'm pretty sure I chose the y-intercept and probably one other point. Um, and then I drew the line for me. So for number six, it's a little bit different. Notice that the numbers in the bar in the chart are not negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. They change these numbers up on me. So make sure that you're paying attention to what those x values are in that chart, because those are the x values you have to plug in. So I plugged in negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And I computed all of the multiplications first, then did the addition, and I ended up with these y values. So I put the points, this x value with the y value I found for it. This x value with the y value I found for it. This x value with the y value I found for it, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I plot these points negative 4 and 4, negative 2 and 3, 0 and 2, 1 and 1, or no, I'm sorry, 2 and 1, and then 4 and 0. And so I used the x, the x intercept and the y intercept to draw the line. So number seven has this graph here, and it says use the graph to identify the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And I noticed that in the um, computer, it says type in an integer or a whole number. And so then they don't want the point. They just want the value. So for the x-intercept, that would be this point here. And the value, the x value there is just three. So that's the whole number or integer that I typed in. Then for the y-intercept, that is located here up at positive four for y. So that's the value that I typed in. Number eight says find the x-intercept and the y-intercept of the equation. Um, and that's it, just find the x and y-intercept. So I did the same thing as I did for number one. For the x-intercept, you plug in zero for y, multiply that, combine those, and then solve for x. For the y-intercept, you plug in zero for x, multiply, combine, and then solve for y. And so then 18 would be the value for the x-intercept and nine would be the value for the y-intercept. Number nine had the same exact directions. So again, plugging in zero for y for the x-intercept and zero for x for the y-intercept. Um, do your multiplication, combine those, and then get rid of the two by dividing. So you get x equals 25 over two. Here, multiply this, you get zero, combine these, it's negative five y, divide both sides by negative five, 
and you end up with negative five as your answer. So this is your x-intercept and your y-intercept, just the value, not the point. So for number 10, it says use the intercepts to graph the equation. This is a lot like number one. So we plug in zero for y to find the x-intercept. This is zero, negative x plus zero is negative x. So divide by this little invisible one here on both sides, you get x by itself equal to negative 10. Plugging in zero for x, this is just becomes negative zero. And for zero, it really doesn't matter if it's negative or positive or no sign at all. It's a completely neutral number. So you basically have nothing plus 4y is going to be 4y. Um, and then to get y by itself, divide both sides by 4. And this does reduce to 5 halves or 2.5. So when I'm graphing this, the x value is going to be at negative 10. But the y value or the y-intercept is going to be at 2.5. And so then that was enough for me to graph that line. So number, I got about two more pages, I think, on this assignment. So number 11 is this equation, and it has the same directions as number 10. So we've got to find the intercepts and then use those to graph it. So we plug in a zero for y. So the zero goes here equal to 360 minus 180 x. 45 times zero is zero. I end up having to solve this equation. So I do move my x's over to the left-hand side. And then once I have my x's on the left-hand side and my constants on the right-hand side, I can divide by that number that's being multiplied by x. So I divided by 180 on both sides and that resulted in x by itself equal to two. Similarly, we're for the y-intercept, we're gonna plug in zero for x. So 180 times zero is zero, and 360 minus zero is 360, but I still have to get the y by itself, so we divide both sides by 45, and we end up with y equal to eight. So for the x-intercepts, it's at positive two for x, the y-intercept is at positive eight for y, and that's enough to graph the line in my math lab. Number 12, same thing. Now, when I go to find the x-intercept, I plugged in zero for y, so it gave me zero, x minus zero is x equal to zero. So the coordinate is zero for x and the zero for y that I started with. For the y-intercept, I plugged in zero for x, did this computation, divided both sides by negative four, and ended up with y equal to zero. So the x value zero that I started with, and then the y value zero that I ended up finding. So that's the same coordinate. I need two coordinates in order to draw the line. So I said, I need another point, And I said, let x equal four or any number. You could have completely chosen any number you want here. You just can't choose zero because you already did that one. So I chose four. So I plugged in four for x. Then I minus my four over. Then I divided by negative four on both sides and I got one. So four for X and then one for Y. If you choose a different X value, you're gonna get a different Y value, but it should still give you the line of the equation. So I plot the points zero, zero here and four, one, and then that drew the line for me. So very important that if you do ask, if you are asked to draw the graph using the X and Y intercepts, but the X and Y intercept happen to be the same spot, you do need to have another point. And I could have let x equal five, I could have let x equal one, I could have let x equal anything I wanted, and then just plugged it in to find the corresponding y. Now these two are a little bit different, 13 and 14, but they were included in this um, assignment. So I wanted to cover these. It said um, for number 13, find the equation of the line shown for the graph, and then the same thing for number 14. So this one is not a slanted line. Now, if it were a slanted line, um, that's actually what we're gonna cover in the next section on how to find the equation of the slanted lines. But when they're not slanted, they're just horizontal or vertical, okay? If it's a horizontal line, it's always gonna be in the form Y equals, um, they use the letter B, okay? And then the B, is the y-intercept. So in this case, my, my y-intercept is at the value three, 
So then the equation of my horizontal line would be y equals to three. Now, similarly for this, if you have a vertical line, vertical lines are always in the equation x equals a, where this value is the x-intercept, okay? And so in that case, my x-intercept was here at negative four, so then my vertical line was x equals negative four. You do need to memorize this or um, honestly you just have to memorize it or write it down on a note sheet, but you definitely need to get used to these two values. So when it's a horizontal line, this is automatically the equation. When it's a vertical line, this is automatic the equation. When it's a slanted line, it's a little more complicated than that. And we will talk about that in the next section. But that is the end of this video. I will see you in the next one.